the technical staff. I've been singing since I was, I can't remember actually. I was, I just knew that I was singing. <laughs> so in school I represented, you know, I was in boarding school. I did solos, represented my house, went to competitions, did all that. Okay. So then I wasn't born again. Then um, uh, my parents are, I mean, my parents are Nigerian. I'm married to a Ghanaian. I was born in the UK, so I have three passports. <laughs> so um, I'm, a, I'm a citizen of West Africa, of the world, should I say, <laughs> of the world, praise God. So I went to the UK. My journey kind of started, um, I mean, more detailed into getting into ministry, ministering. My journey started on, I went to the UK in 1986 after my secondary school education, which I, I didn't do too well, so I, wanted, I needed to go, I went over to the UK, which is where I was born, um, to kind of just do my O-levels again. And also the people that I was living with, I was living with my cousins, and my cousins were already born again. They were like, they were in four square church. So obviously the minute I entered their house, obviously I had to go wherever they were going, I had to go with them. So, <laughs> and I came from a Catholic background. My parents were Catholic, you know, a whole lot of rituals. I mean, I went to Catholic church because I had to go. Mom was going, so here goes. You are going. So, so obviously my cousins, I was living with my cousins who were all born again, so I had to follow them wherever, whatever event or service they were going to, I had to follow them. So I think the first or second event I followed them to, hey, there was an altar call, and here I was. <laughs> here I was in front. Not I'm thinking, well, I suppose I, at that point I would say God led me. I mean, I got up and went forward. But um, obviously... I got born again in 19, October 1986, but I didn't quite understand the step that I took. I um, kind of, for the, that 86 to 87, I was kind of finding my feet. I was still living the way that I wanted to live. I wasn't at home, so praise God. I could, if I wanted to go to a party, if I wanted to have a boyfriend, hey, praise God, there's no mother, there's no father who said that you come and visit you at 2 o'clock and they can't come. No, I, I, wanted, I did what I wanted to do. But I was still going to church. Well, so I was born again, so my cousins were still going to church. So I was still following them to church. As for the church bit, I, I, sometimes I feel as if, you know, there was like, it's like there was some angel around me that sharpened my eyes that I had to go to church. Because even sometimes I will be in, in the clothes that I wore out <laughs> to the party, and I will come to church. I remember, I remember one brother looking at me. I, I, he saw me in the clothes wearing some tight things. I think he looked at me like, is she, is she born again? Why is she in this church? <laughs> the look he gave me, I thought, oh, forget it. Oh, I can't be bothered. So, but I was still coming to church. So that, the first year of being born again was actually just a bit of a roller coaster. And I think what eventually um, broke the whole thing was that when, obviously, you, you're doing all these things, going to... I'm, I'm one of my cousins too. wasn't quite that. wasn't that quite serious. You know, they were. Everybody was trying to find their feet. So we were all still kind of doing the things, living the way that we were living previously. You're still having the boyfriend. They're still and the unbelievers. Obviously, they. You know, the unbelievers also know. They know when you're not serious. So they will still invite you to their party, their all night party, and you're also saying yes. So obviously, you're definitely not serious. So, <laughs> so we were still kind of in and out. We come to church, go to this party, go to that one. And then I remember the, 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 the as they say, the, uh, what, what the straw, is it the straw that comes back, what's the, what's the expression? Was when I was, there was somebody that I was dating, and he then said to me, and I always share this thing, because I think it's so important. He said to me, okay, he, he's not a British citizen, but I am British. So would, I, would it be okay if he paid me X amount of money so that he could marry me, and then we could, he could get his British citizenship? At which point... I think all the alarm bells went off. I think foolishness flew out. And the Holy Spirit <laughs> came in. And in my head, I was thinking, that money looks good. I can see my bare apartment. or oh, our bare apartment. Chairs. Things that I can buy. Chairs. Furniture over there. A better bed. A better mattress. Because I, the apartment that we were living in, was just, the living room was bare. There was nothing. It was a carpet. Even though we were in London. Praise God. We had beds to sleep on, and that was about the bit of comfort that we had. But our living room we had was just bare. It was just a carpet. And when he mentioned the money in my head, I could see, I saw things. 
that could be bought. But then at the same time, I, could, I just saw red flags. The Holy Spirit said, no, no, no. The Holy Spirit said to me, I remember the expression the Holy Spirit said. Was, he, said he said to me, it's an apple with a worm on the inside. And that it looks nice on the outside. But you are going to bite into it. And you're going to discover that now that you have bitten into it, you have to continue eating it. But what is inside, you don't actually like. So I, rem I still remember where I was. I was standing in a phone booth. And in those days, we didn't have mobile phones. You had to go to a phone booth and make uh, uh, phone booths on the roadside and just make a call. So I was in the red, you know, the typical red London phone booth. I was standing in that phone booth, and this guy was telling me all these things. And I thought, no, this is the end. No. In my head, my, I said, no, this is not happening. So I said, no, I, um, I can't do that. I can't do that, and I'm, I'm not going to. Let's just, let's just end it right there, because I can't continue and do this. And that's how I ended it. And I, and I believe for me, that, for me that was the turning point in my relationship with God. Then I, then I, I then began to seek God actively, look, you know, looking into scripture, studying the word, you know, following. I mean, even though, I mean, I must say the church that I was in, which is still the church that I'm in, KICC, or oh, my, my pastor is still the same pastor. I must say the word that he was preaching every time, you know, those words used to come and they will, those words will haunt you. You know, you, you preach a message and it's like, mm. In your head, the man is the Holy Spirit is talking to you through the man. He's he's talking to you and he's he's pushing you to fall in love to to be um, he's pushing you the, the, the messages were pushing you to be um, hungry, that's the word, and thirsty for God and do more for God. So I believe even though I was kind of doing my own thing, you know, sometimes you're doing your own thing, but there are messages that are going on, and that's what happened to me. The messages that are going on around you, and sometimes people think that it's not getting in, but it's getting in. That's why I say never give up on people. Yeah. Never give up on people, because you might think they're not listening, but they are listening. But that's what I found, that the messages were sinking. Obviously, I wasn't kind of doing what I was supposed to be doing. I wasn't living how I should be living, but I found that in those times when, 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 that, when I was confronted with a situation, I found that everything was flooding back to me that no, you can't do this you have to live for god and i so i i started taking things more seriously and i found that it was it was almost interesting because it was almost at a certain point in time whereby myself and some other um young people in the church also started deciding that we did we no longer felt because we used to have this thing where there were a lot of parties some of the people were they were not unbelievers they were christians but then the people who will come to the party they were a mix of christians and unbelievers and you know that that mix is not going to work something is somebody's going to give give in somewhere everybody might not give in, but somebody's going to give in so what's the point of setting up a platform for somebody else to fall so at the same point a lot of about four or five of the young people which also included my which also included my husband who wasn't my husband then we there was a, like a decision in our minds that when we got the invite for the next party, it was like, you know, when, when, when your spirit loses interest in certain activity, it was as if God just put that desire in there that he took away the desire to want to go to certain kind of places. So I remember with the, I still remember the invite for the last one. I remember saying, I think my cousins also said, well, we don't actually need to, um, we're not going for this one. We do, uh, we're not, I'm not interested. What's going to happen there? So we found that there was a point in our lives that this was like 1987 going to 88 that no our, our, our desires were turning somewhere else and that was towards god and some of the things that used to interest us which we used to find exciting we wanted to be there we, we didn't want to be part of it anymore so we just so i just i mean from there i just continued and that was after afterwards i think my my my, my i remember my cousin introducing mentioning to my pastor pastor matthew and she said oh my cousin, she can really sing. She can really, really sing. She needs to be, she needs to be in the team, in the, uh, part of the team of singers. So that's how I kind of joined. I started singing. We had what we called the K. We it was actually then it was a four square. We're in four square church, and it was a four square. What was it? Band and singers or something like that. And we started singing in church. Actually, Pastor Matthew would teach us the songs. We sing it because he plays. He used to play um, guitar. He would teach us songs, and that's kind of how I got. Um, singing in church so I started from there singing not even leading worship just singing in church we'll sing a song Pastor Matthew wants to sing a song we'll sing just very simple simple songs that we'll sing in church on and off and then as time began we started you know um, I remember when Pastor Matthew said that he wanted me to join be one of the worship leaders actually even before that I used to lead worship in where was I leading how many people was I leading I was leading, I was leading five people 
in worship. That's when my worship leading started. I, I led five people in a cell, home cell. And I did that for a while. Then my husband was in charge of, you know, the, um, organizing the prayer, uh, the all-night prayer meetings for the church. And, he, and then he got some of us to say, okay, why don't we let's lead worship for the all-night prayer meeting. Then I started leading worship at the all-night prayer meeting. It was like 100 people, maybe 50, 80 people leading worship there. And then eventually my pastor, actually, Pastor Matthew, then said, oh, he wanted me to join the... the I mean, by this time, there were loads of worship, other worship leaders. And then he said he wanted me to be part of the worship leaders for Sunday service, which for me was like, wow, that is big. I mean, in my heart already, and in my heart already, there was already desire. I already had a desire in my heart, and I already, I already had an anger in my spirit against the way that people used to stand and stare in worship. And I, I, I used to tell my cousin, why are they standing there staring? Don't they know who they're singing about? Don't they know what they're talking about? Why are they singing like there's no life? You know, I, there was a, in, in my spirit, there was always that. I couldn't stand people just, they're leading worship and you're like, you know, people are standing there staring, looking, picking their nose, scratching their head, picking their, I'm thinking, oh, in my head, I mean, I, was, I wasn't that old in the faith, but in my mind, it's not, isn't God a lot more than this? I mean, I don't know too many scriptures, but... I think God is a lot more than you know, this. If I'm singing to him, then I might as well sing with everything that is in me. So that's as uh, a journey. And I believe that it was God that put that desire in my heart. Uh, that began a journey of, you know, seeking God. And, and even some of the things that I learned, you know, leading worship. You know, there were things like, I mean, I saw them in books later. And I thought, oh, well, well, well. Um, I think, thank you, Lord, you, you taught me that. Uh, maybe I need to write a book about what you taught me. Um, <laughs> because there are things like, you know, when people ask, oh, do you prepare for a service? All these things I actually learned, you know, because I wanted to, because I wanted to give my best. So when I, before I came for a service, even though I was leading five people, you know, I, I had a small list. I had well, a little tiny sheet of paper. I had written something on there because I, I wanted to have something to say. No, I'm going to stand there doing, um, uh, mm -mm. No, I, if it was two songs, I'm going to lead for 10 minutes. I had some two songs to lead the five people in worship with, or one song. I had something to start with. I, I prepared. I never thought that it was something small or why they put him in front of five. For me, the five was actually a privilege. I was privileged to lead the five people in the cell group, and we had a fantastic time worshiping God. Uh, just the five of us, you know. Um, so I, I led it like, well, this is it's for God, so it, must, it has to be good. So whether there are two people or there are five people, I must prepare. I must do something towards it. I must ask God what he wants to do. So even then when, when I was asked to lead the all-night prayer meetings, oh my God, I, I just don't know. And this is even bigger than the five. Then I'll get my Bible out. Okay, what's my lead scripture? What am I going to use to, what's my lead scripture for tonight? There were days, I mean, I go back, I still have some of the Bibles. I go back and I see the notes that I wrote for an all-night prayer meeting next to the scripture. I have, I, some of them I wrote the dates. So when I look at it, I actually laugh and I think, wow, Lord, help me to continue like this. I go back to them, I open the Bible, some of the Bibles, the, all the pages are out, and I see, I, see the, I see the scriptures and I see the date, 1992. And then I see all night prayer meeting and I see that's the scripture that I use. And my heart melts and I think, Lord, please may my heart continue to be that tender that I will never get to the point where I think, oh, I'm so big. Ah, of course now, I know. I know what needs to happen. Yeah, we're leading worship, isn't it? Ah. Song number three, song number four, song number ten. Let's add it all together. Let's make sure the medley is, is, is flowing, is grooving, and uh, the people will be fine. No, 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 no. So, so I still catch myself. And, no, Helen, you can't do that. I catch and talk to myself. No, you can't. You've got to do it the right way. You've got to seek God. So that, that, so that, that, has, that was my journey. And that was, how, that was how I started the journey when it comes to music. Um, and then leading worship, and I and I until today, I mean, one of the scriptures that um, that was in that has been in my heart and that God has given me. I mean, I've had it since nineteen, I don't know, since the nineties. It's the scripture that God gave me, and it's um, Psalm forty, verse three, and it's always been the focus of my attention and what I want to happen, and I I, I claim it as mine. And I make it personal. He has put, and I'm reading the Amplified Version. He has put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear, revere and worship 
and put their trust and confident reliance in the Lord. So that was my confession that God, my mouth, my mouth must proclaim a new song. My mouth must proclaim your name. And the song that I sing is a song of praise, is a song of praise unto you. Every time I stand up to sing, may it be a song that causes people to praise you. A song that draws people to praise you. It's a song of praise unto God. And that many will hear the song. They will see and they will reverence you. May everything that I open my mouth up to sing, may it draw people to reverence you. And to put their confidence and trust in your name. That, so whenever I stand, that is, my, that is the prayer that I pray. That wherever I stand, Lord, let the song. I'm, you know, I, I'm not, which is why there are some songs that I cannot sing. Because they have no... Uh, they have no weight. They have no content. There's no weight. So it does nothing. I'm thinking, it, it, I can't use it. Because I, I need songs that will draw people. I want songs that will cause people to worship God. Songs that will cause people to celebrate God's goodness. Songs that will draw people to testify about who God is. Songs that will draw people to begin to mention the name of God. Songs that will cause people to think, why was I crying just now? God is too good. Songs that were called, you know, I remember going to a, a, a concert and I got, I remember getting an email, uh, actually a Facebook messenger afterwards and the person said to me, you know, I came, I came with my fiance to, the, to this event. Actually, she wasn't going to come because she was feeling really depressed. But I went to her house and I dragged her to come along. But I just wanted to say thank you very much for the songs that you sang. Because when she, by the time we left the place, actually she was, I couldn't believe it. My, that is what he is. I couldn't believe it myself. But she, her, her mood, everything about her had changed. And this was the person who did not want to leave the house. They were so depressed. They didn't want to leave home. But they came. And after the ministration, she, she turned to me and said, something has happened. Something has happened to me. And that, so, so, I mean, that is just one testimony. But I, I, Always say, Lord, as I stand before the people, Lord, I thank you for the gift you've given me. But I'm, I'm really praying that, Lord, as people come and as they hear, as we all lift up our voice in worship, our prayer, Lord, is that what the scripture is saying, you have put a new song in my mouth. This song that you have put in my mouth is a hymn of praise unto you. May many look and fear. May they reverence and worship you as we sing these songs. It will not be empty. But they will reverence, they will worship you, their lives will be changed, they will be comforted, joy will be released, peace will be released in Jesus' name. So that's kind of what happens in the background with me. That's, those are the things that I, even on the day, and, it, and let me also say, it is not every day that you are feeling that you want to do what God, is, like, you, like, do I want to come here and sing? Do I want to come here and talk? Every day, you're not feeling like that every day. But you speak to yourself. That's what I found, that you had to speak to yourself. The scripture says, Casting down imaginations and every height that exists above the knowledge of God. And for me, that's one of the things that I did to myself. I, I spoke to my spirit. And I cast, when, when there's doubt, you can't do it. Who do you think you are? You think you have it all together. There are other people there who can do it better than you. You know, you go somewhere and you're like, oh my God, look at the lineup. Oh Lord. People think, oh Pastor Helen, oh please. I, I thank God that God still makes me nervous. I, and I like it. I thank God that he still makes, not, um, should I say God, but there's in my, in my spirit, there's never, there's never a thing like, I know it all. But every time I stand up, I go on a stage, no matter who's like, I'm thinking, God help me. Lord, I've got butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> I need some help. Help me to go there. Help me not to forget my words. Think, what? Yeah. <laughs> I get on stage and think, Lord, help me not to forget my words. Help me to be calm. Help me to do what you want. Help me to say what you want. Help me to, the ad-libs that I'm going to say, Lord, give me ad-libs that are going to draw people to yourself. Help me, Lord, to say exactly what you want to say. Somebody's here today. I don't know what's, what they're going through, but Lord, as I, I say this song, Lord, this song is for you. The song is for you. Let it glorify you. And in turn, you will touch somebody's life. So that's, that's kind of my, what happens in the background, you know. So I always pray that prayer. So from that time onwards, you know, working in, um, Serving in church, and I'm still serving under the same pastor. Pastor Matthew Ashimolowa is still my pastor, still my spiritual father. I was there since I was 19. I'm now 50. I've, I've served with the same pastor. So, um, 
So for me, and I learned a lot, you know, I learned a lot serving. I learned so much serving. I remember my first music director, who is actually now the CEO of KICC worldwide. Um, his name is Pastor Dipo. And our Pastor Dipo, I mean, he was, <laughs> he was like a, well, he was like a terrorist, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, he's like, oh, he will, you know, he, he, in the right way, he will push you. And the things that he was, he wasn't kind of your smiley, smiley pastor. You know, he was, he was straight to the point. No, you know, when he says, get up and go and sing, you're not kind of looking. When he says, this is what you're doing, that is what you're doing. There's no excuses. So I learned some of the things, you know, I learned from him, you know, he will push you. I mean, I remember there was, he gave me a song once. I, I'm, I'm just speaking my heart. Um, I remember him giving me a song and I remember I, I, I didn't like the song he said I should go and sing this song I remember trying all my, the tricks in the book to see whether he will after two weeks he will give up on me and give the song to somebody else I would tell him Pastor, but this song I'm not feeling it. the style it's not Helen Helen go and learn the song <laughs> this is not good I'm thinking he, oh, no he says no you have to sing it and I remember this song. I mean, that was one of the songs that I... It's not a difficult song. I just didn't like the song. And I wasn't flowing. But, I, but then I realized after, after, this was after six weeks with the same song. And he was not giving up on me. He said, I'm singing the song. Then I went and sat with the song. And I dissected it. I began to... I said, no, I need to... This song, if Pastor Dick Paul says I should learn it, then it means that there's something that he's seen that I'm not seeing. I remember sitting down with the song. I dissected the song till I, the song was in my bones. And I began to understand it because I felt, I think what I obviously, what happened was that I didn't really grasp the content of the song. And for me, I have, and from that I learned that you have to understand. When you're singing a song, you must understand. You must dissect the song. What is the song talking about? What is the main theme of the song? What, you know, the meaning, and even the words. I look in the song, what are the words in the song? What do they mean? And what do they denote? Why am I singing? You know, I mean, basic songs. I always make a joke about the song. Uh, what's the song? It, it talks about bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. All hail the power of Jesus' name. And I said, and I always joke about the fact that, you know, I mean, early years, if you ask me what a diadem was, I've not got a clue what a diadem is. Since nobody uses the word, I mean, who on earth uses the word diadem these days? I mean, nobody uses the word diadem. So, I mean, the first time I heard that song, I had to go and open a dictionary. What is a diadem? Because I'm not singing that song that says diadem, and I don't know what diadem means. So, bring forth the royal, mm -mm -mm, and crown him. What does that mean? I thought a crown, maybe it means, okay, we should put something on it. But what, did, what, is, what does a diadem denote? So, so I'm, I always, so I, just working with my music director, Pastor Dick, well, he would know, he would push you. So you had to understand what you were singing. And I, would, I, would, I always tell people, when you go and look at the word up in a dictionary, it will not be written on your head that you went to look in a dictionary. Nobody would know. So look in the dictionary. Google it. Which is what I do. Google the word check the meaning so I, I so i learned to actually when when i was given a song that i went through i looked through all the words if i did not they even worship songs that if i didn't understand it at that point i wouldn't add it to my list until i felt that i really had an understanding of what it actually meant and what it was supposed to be uh, what it was supposed to denote and what i was supposed to be getting across to the people what was the understanding that i'm trying to get across to the people because if i am leading them in worship and i don't understand Scripture said we should worship him in spirit and in truth. Truth, scripture, and with sincerity. Integrity. So there's no integrity if I am singing a song that I don't understand. There's lack of integrity on my part right there. So I learned to actually dig into songs, look for That's why my love for definitions started i started I, when I, I, and it, now when i'm when i'm preparing a message i always look i always define i'm always looking for words defining words what things mean because for me understanding for me was very important that you had to understand what you're doing if you're singing a song you can't just be in a choir you can't just lead a song and you don't understand oh, to sing, so you're singing it what does it mean what is the message what is the core message of the song so these are the things that I, I began to pick up. I, I found that, you know, some of the things that I learned, it wasn't that I sat down and it was taught to me, but 
I just took instruction from the from the direction I was like my music director would say go and learn this song and he pushes me and pushes me and tells me you need to understand the song is saying then I know that okay there's there's more to just me standing and singing I must understand my message what is the message what is the theme what is the focus what is the scripture from which this song stands so that's where I got to the point whereby if I'm going to sing I will get a scripture what is the scripture that backs up this song? Is there, is it, is, I mean, I have to find as a word, as, a, as Jesus said, where is it written? When Jesus Christ was tempted, he said, it is written. So regarding the song, where is it written? Where is it written? You know, I think, uh, was it Jesus who said in the volume of the books, it is written. So, where is it written? In the where is, where is the word that says this song should be sang? So, and for me, I mean, it was a helpful journey because obviously when you're looking, um, though I'm looking for the scripture for a song, but also you then begin to, I found that I would find another scripture and a cross-reference another scripture. And then I found I was actually, it was like a little Bible study. So I actually enjoyed the whole process. Even though it was just for a song, but I learned, I was, as I was doing it, I was growing. I was learning as well. So I found a scripture and then I always used to find another song. I would find another song that said this, that had the same message. So whenever I was given a song, because I, because well, I learned. Also, I learned that because the days and when I first started singing, we, we we didn't necessarily have all the instrumentalists who could play all the songs that I wanted to sing. So we used to use, we used to use a lot of backing tracks, a lot of backing tracks. So obviously, when a backing track, and you know, backing tracks, when it ends, it ends. So you better have something else to do after that. So my thing was that I just taught myself, okay, well, if you're going to use a backing track, and obviously, um, the instrumentalist might not be able to play the song after you finish. They might not be able to tag along. So I always had a song, which I knew that they would be able to play. I always had another song, which related directly to the song that I was singing. So if I was singing a song about God's faithfulness, I've got another, I've got a, a chorus in my mind that I know the whole congregation can sing, and I know my instrumentalists can actually play. So I, so that was kind of my homework. So I, in the background, I'll be doing all these things. So sometimes it would look like, oh, you are, oh, you are so. How did you get all that? Some of it was planned. Yes, some of it was deliberate and planned because I, because I didn't want to. Well, after looking a bit foolish, after a few ones. Then you learn that, okay, well, you're not going to stand there looking, twiddling your thumbs, wondering what's happening next. I finished. Bye. Who's next? No, you can't. After a few, <laughs> you know, even down to basic things like introducing a song. I remember my husband, he wasn't my husband then, and he would say to me, because I, I, I speak very fast, even now, and that's another story. I'll come to that. <laughs> I speak very fast. So when it comes to like maybe introducing songs and and also, I was also the sort of person who I just wanted to sing. That, that talking bit was just not my skill. So I wanted to get on the stage, sing the song, and get off. And then, and then he said to me, no, you can't just get up there, start singing. You have to say something. Which is what actually started my journey of looking for the scripture. Because I had to have something to say. And I'm not, gonna just, I, I'm not one who just talks, just be talking yap yap aimlessly. I said, let me find, I've got to find something to say. So I mean, if I have a scripture, I'm safe. I won't be talking rubbish. Get a scripture say it, even if you don't say nothing about it, just say the scripture and move to the song. It's something. So that, that was how my journey on even looking for the scriptures uh, as well started. So he would tell me, you have to introduce the song. So I, I had to learn how to introduce songs, bring some, di well, 30 seconds of just saying something about the song and putting an expectation in the hearts of the people about what I was about to sing. And obviously, if you do not have an understanding of the song, you can't even talk about the song. If the song is not in your spirit, and I found that um, I, I, had to, I learned to take some of the songs as part of my devotion. Some of the songs that I was going to present became part of my devotion. So that if you are singing the song to God, there's no way that you're going to get on stage and you have nothing to say. There's no way that you're going to get, get, stand before the congregation and you run out of ad lips. You don't run out. Because you, were, you have worked the song before God. You and God have worked on the song. You've used it to worship Him. And the minute you've used the song, you, it's in your time of devotion, in your room. You know, 
begins to give you, he gives you revelation about the song. He begins to open your eyes. Ah, that scripture. Oh, that's, that line that you just sang, it's over there. Go and look for it in the scripture. That line that you just sang, it's actually from the psalm. Go and look for it. And then you go and look and you think, wow, it's in here. Wow. And you begin to, and then so God is speaking to you. Your time of preparation is not okay. And you'll be giving a song. And we're singing this tomorrow. Let's, you know, your, your, your heart must be set on pleasing God, on honoring God, on giving God, on setting the best, what's the word? The best banquet, the best buffet before, you know, you're not coming there thinking, oh, it's going to be jello and chicken. You set up the best. So you go, you go and dig for the best and set it up before God. This, and then when, 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 you, when you give God the best, you'll be surprised what he does. And I find that God does things even when you are not as prepared as you think. I found days that I said, Lord, I'm so disappointed in myself. I've not done what I'm supposed to do. I should have done this. I should have done this. And on that day, you get up there and the Holy Spirit is like, Forget what you haven't done. Let's go. I see your, where your heart is. Let's go. You get up there and you come up, you're like, Ha! Huh. Lord, now that was something because I know me. I, I did nothing. <laughs> My preparation, whatever I thought I prepared was zero in comparison to what you just did. So I learned that relying, relying totally on the Holy Spirit. You have to rely on the Holy Spirit when you are feeling like you are there and when you feel like you are not. Every time when you, you know, because we're not always there. Times where things will happen, you just heard some bad news or somebody said something about you. Somebody has, in these days, somebody has posted something about you for all the Facebook friends to see. Or, you know, or somebody, <laughs> or somebody has said something or you just had that horrible phone call and... Or you just or sometimes, or, then, or sometimes you're just having a, the the enemy is just beating you down, thinking like, who do you think you are? You think you can do this? We will see. So there's a fight going on before you get on there, and you're thinking, Lord, how am I going to? Be? There's too many conflicting voices in my head. How do I do? And, and I learned to. There were days when you just walk on stage. So I'm thinking, Lord, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to say, but Lord, um, help me. I have a list. I pre, I've done my small bit. Holy Spirit, take over. I want you to guide my thoughts, guide my mind. And sometimes I will look at the list and the Holy Spirit will say, actually, no, put the list down. We'll, we'll come to the list 20 minutes later. Now start with this song. And you start with the song and you think, well, wow. How come I didn't think about that? Because that's, and, and the Holy Spirit leads you. And you find that you look at your list. I mean, the days where I've, I've drawn up a whole list. And maybe um, I started with a song. And then the Holy Spirit takes, okay, we, we just need three songs. I mean, have you ever done two songs in 30 minutes and you think, are we going to stop? And the Holy Spirit says, no. That is the song. That is what I want the people to say to me. That is what I want them to talk about. It is what I want them to meditate on. So I learned that listen to the, listening to the Holy Spirit, whether you're feeling up to it or not. I always realize that, um, and a scripture that I always, that I confess and I keep on confessing, and I even, t I even tell it to my daughters, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do, not on my own, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's, um, it's always important to know who is our source. And that's what I found. I, had to, I always had to remember that God is my source. And that nothing else really matters um, when I know that God is my source. That there's nothing... Um, I'm looking for a scripture, that's all. <laughs> okay. So it's Philippians 4.13. Um, nothing else uh, matters or nothing else seems as big as it is when I know that God is my source. And the scripture there says in Amplified, it says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. We must always remember that we are in. We are not out on our own. We are in Christ. 
I'm being in Christ. You know, he says, I am self-sufficient. So, you know, I can say I am self-sufficient, but I cannot be self-sufficient apart from Christ's sufficiency. I cannot be self-sufficient apart from the strength that comes from Christ. I must be self-sufficient in Him. And that's, that's how I've, um, God's, by God's grace, I've tried. And I said, Lord, help me on the day that I'm kind of trying to be self-sufficient. Lord, knock me on the head and put me back in this direction. Um, Lord, I want to do it in your strength. In your strength. And you know, the scripture tells us already that, you know, in, in, um, in our weakness, actually, his strength is made perfect. And he says that, you know, Paul said, well, since your strength actually gets enlarged when I'm weak. Well, let me boast. Lord, I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. <laughs> yes, yes. That's basically, that's what Paul was saying. That, Lord, let me, shout it, let me shout it from the rooftop. I'm weak so that your strength, so you can come and show off. Show off who you are. Because that's when, when we feel that we can do it, then you don't give, the God has no room to maneuver. But when we say, Lord, I can't do this, even with the singing, the skill, you say, you know, every, I tell people there is nothing that you cannot commit to God. There is nothing too small, nothing too big that you cannot commit to God. There are days where I, my, I've lost my voice, and I can say I supernaturally sang the song, because I don't know where the voice came from. I remember I traveled, we traveled with um, a group of singers, we traveled with Pastor Matthew, and um, we were like, it was like uh, meetings every day, and every, the... We had to sing almost every day. And then I remember the, was it the, the last day or so, and the Pastor Matthew said to me, oh, I want you to sing the song, How Great Thou Art. And the How Great Thou Art that I'm talking about is not How Great Thou Art congregational. So it's, it's a How Great Thou Art, which was um, originally recorded by a very interesting lady. She's one of the highest sopranos I've ever heard. She's an old lady. Her name is Sandy Patty. And Sandy Patty's soprano is no joking. <laughs> okay, so... I'm th and I'm thinking, this is like after four or five days we've been singing. And I thought, Lord. And I was thinking, how on earth am I going to pitch that thing? I'm thinking, Lord, this is serious. I mean, I, I couldn't tell Pastor, uh, Pastor, my voice is tired. I cannot sing. Huh? I mean, that's another thing. In my time, and still, I still do it for myself. I didn't give, I, I, things like excuses. I didn't actually, the word excuses did not exist. Well, in my brain, they didn't. If I was given an assignment, my, I think there's so many things going on. Right? If I was given an assignment, you run, I you run with it. What is it? When are we going to do it? I'll come to that. I'm going to come. To, I need to come back to that assignment bit. But the song, I mean, I took the song and I said, "Well, you got to help me because I the pitch. I normally sing this song and I normally pitch it. But Lord, today my voice is tired. I've been singing for about five days and the voice is tired. And I just said, Lord, I just rehearsed normally and I just said, Okay, I've rehearsed. Lord, help me. I remember when I got up there and started singing, and I was thinking, you know, so a singer, song like you're doing the song, and you're like, you are anticipating that place where the voice is going to crack at this point. So let me just dive under the notes before it cracks. Let me go under, and then I'll come up at the top again, where it's more comfortable. <laughs> but I was singing, and I, thought, and I just said, let's just go for it. Holy Spirit, help me. And I, I remember singing, oh, be Lord. Like, oh, yeah, Jesus, please. There was, a part, there was a party going on in my head while I was standing there. <laughs> you know? And then, and it came through. So, there are times about some of it, some of it is supernatural. If you allow God to take you that way. So, talking about, so listen to the Holy Spirit, talking about the assignments. You know, I, as I said, I, I, I learned that excuses, I, well, I didn't have excuses. So, you see, all the things that I was doing, it wasn't that my pastor was giving me, saying, do not give excuses. But the, um, the actions that I was taking in themselves were instructions. I learned later on that these are, they were instructions themselves. So I remember my pastor, you know, he would see some, he would hear a song and say, well, we're singing it on Sunday. We're thinking, we have not rehearsed. I remember one of them was like, uh, there was a song, or a, there's, a, there's a film called The Preacher's Wife, in which Whitney Houston acted with Denzel Washington. And they did a Christmas song. Joy is the hymn to the world, but man, the joy to the world of that album is, is crazy. And obviously, who, who is going to sing it? It's me, isn't it? So I, we get a call. Oh, Pastor Matthew has just watched this film, and I just I'm thinking, oh no, I don't like the sound of that. He has just watched the film <laughs> because oh, and I'm thinking, what song? Joy to the world. By, I said, by, by which who? Whitney who? And I'm thinking, Lord, have mercy, this man wants to kill us, surely. 
and it was, it was approaching Christmas. They said, that, that carol, I want it, that version. We are singing it on Sunday. I think this is like Monday or something. Hmm. So here, first, first of all, we didn't want to track. So first of all, we were running all over London, trying to find this track. Where are we going to get the track? That wasn't time of Google. We could just Google or go on YouTube. There was no YouTube to be checking on. So we had to go and look which was there in a shop that had the back in the soundtrack to the movie so we can find that particular song. Eventually we found it and I think then we started rehearsing. I mean I remember sitting up all night sitting there going through all the lyrics, learning the whole thing. I mean joy to the world never never proved so difficult before. But this was not joy to the world as usual. So so I remember sitting up there rehearsing this thing. We had to go on Sunday then we said okay we'll, we'll do as much as we can but we had to present the song. There was no excuse like pastor <laughs> Joy to the world. Christmas is only going to come once. So it has to be sung this Christmas, not next Christmas, this Christmas, which was four days away. So here we were. Even all of us, musicians, everybody had to get their act together. And Whether you thought you could play or not, better start playing in your dreams. <laughs> get in your room, start rehearsing that song. And we all got together and we did the song. So all of these things were, it wasn't that, he said, well, this is what happens when you are given a song. Make sure you go out and practice it. No, they were just actions that I took. They were actions that I took that we, it wasn't like, you know, you will grumble a bit and mm, why are they giving us, but then you, you get up and you push yourself and you find that you actually got it done. So I found that it can be done. So I told myself, well, it actually can be done. Though I don't like the experience of the pressure that I'm under to get it done. But I found that actually the pressure helped because I learned a lot of things that I wouldn't have learned. I'm now sit up, I'll sit up and learn, and learn a song, go through a song, you know. And I think, well, okay, well, it, it was good practice because I learned a lot of different things. So sometimes you'll be under pressure. And it's because God wants to bring the best out of you. Never ever think, well, eh, why are they getting me to sing the song? Why is it, is it only me? Why, 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 why? Stop, stop whining. Stop complaining. I tell people, did you ask God you want to be used? Well, here he is. He's using you. Be used and be used very well. So <laughs> that prayer that you prayed, Lord, use me. Use me, Jesus. What was that song? Uh, I surrender. Here it is. Yeah. Uh, I give myself. Well, self, here you are. Now give yourself away and stop complaining. Some songs you shouldn't sing it. If you don't want. It's the truth. If you don't want God. I, I was, whenever you sing a song, just remember that the assignment is waiting. So when you say you're giving yourself away. Eh, heaven heard your confession. And they have packaged a suitcase with assignments. She has given herself away. So here, here is what she has given herself away to. Here it is. They will deliver it to your doorstep. And what you have given yourself away to might not look like what you were imagining. It might be something to do with your character. But God has to deal with God will put that sister who steps on your toe every day because you have anger issues. And you are called a minstrel. But you are a very angry minstrel. So God will put Abba there and she will make you angry. Well, well. And God will see whether you are going to give yourself away to him so that he can use you, as the song says. So that he can tame that character, tame that anger and teach you how to deal with it. Or whether you are going to walk out of the choir and leave the church. It's the truth. So be careful what you sing. Because the angels are waiting to deliver assignments for every song that you sing. I surrender. Well, that's what I, I found. I, I mean, I, that was just my personal. I found that, that's, that was what was happening. That the minute you, all these songs are prayers. They are not empty. Don't see them. Oh, we're just, we're just singing a song. No. You are making a confession. You are saying something. You are, sending, you are telling heaven something. You are telling heaven something. So I learned, you know, how to get rid of excuses. There were no more excuses. I remember once, I remember once, oh, I was so angry. I'm, I'm just sharing my, we're not perfect. I was so angry because my pastor had given us this assignment. We had to come and do some recording. And I had some people visiting at home. And I remember that day I said, I am not going. For the, I am not going. It was my, the one day where I said, I am not doing this. I'm not doing this. And I'm saying, I'm not going. You know, those things you <laughs> you just said, I'm not going. Eh, they should record it without me. They can do it without me. After all, they leave me there. I was going on and on. I remember my pastor. Eh, eh, eh. I was thinking, oh, God. 
Where are you? <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm at home. Get that taxi and come over. We are waiting for you to do the recording. I'm thinking, oh! <laughs> I mean, I, but I knew that God was saying, hell, this is what I called you to do. You cannot run away from the assignment that I've given you. Now get out of the house, get in the taxi, and go and record the song. I was directed by your pastor. I was fuming. I got there. I was swollen up, angry, standing there. <laughs> I still remember walking in. I'm thinking, in my head, I'm thinking, what is wrong with you? So I got there. I mean, the minute, the minute I started, cause I, I could not sing the song without, I could not have even sang the song without anger. The minute I opened my mouth to sing the song, I think the Holy Spirit just, phew, wipe it all out and let the right spirit flow so i've learned is so i'm saying i'm i'm sharing that with you because it's not that i'm perfect or i got it right all the time no there were days where i think no i me i've had enough i don't want to sing it why don't they give us two weeks why they're not giving us one month to learn a song why are we always being pushed to learn why the holy spirit tell you just shut up learn the song get on with it i'm thinking this is not fair it's not fair it's not fair <laughs> but I wish that the Holy Spirit has kept quiet and is not answering you anymore. So you either get up and do it or you disobey. So I've learned, you know, I've I've learned how to just, you know, what what does God want? And and I always think of what is the end result? What does God want to happen? What is God looking for? There are results in people's lives that I, I cannot I cannot, you know, I could not have paid to get that kind of result. I mean, the, the, what, what, what can I give for somebody's soul? People, somebody comes and says, well, I walked into church and you were the one leading worship. I was not born again, but I stayed in church for five weeks and then I got born again because I had to come for the worship. What did you do with that? And then I'm whining that my pastor gave me the song and I, uh, at, at that point I just think, oh Lord, how many songs do you want me to sing? Five? Here I am, Lord, bring them, bring them. You know, when you hear what people, because sometimes people don't come up to you and tell you, but once in a while, some people come because God wants you to know that it's not about you. That ministry is not about you, but it's about him. And when you have a relationship with God, when you are talking with God regularly, when you are speaking with him, when you are studying his word, he will drop things in your heart and he will guide you and he will lead you and he will cause what you do to stand out. I always pray to God, Lord, I don't want to be like everybody else. I said, I want my voice to be unique. I don't want to be like everybody else. We all have a voice, but Lord, you've got to make, you've got to make my... I said, Lord, mark me out. Put your mark on me. Mark me out. I don't want to be like everybody else. Mark me out. Let when I stand, Lord, let there be something... That, you know, there's something different. And I say, well, Lord, whenever I stand before people, I want them to be jealous. Jealous till they get to you. Jealous till they are running to you. Jealous they are saying i want what she has i i want i want them to be jealous so these are some of the prayers i pray i said lord make them jealous to the point that the person gets on their knees the person pursuing say lord i want you i need you so I, those are the kind of you know, so i pray some very those are the interesting prayers that i pray make them jealous may the song that i sing haunt them till they are worshiping those are the kind of prayers i pray I say lord Haunts them. You know when something is haunting you, you, you're going everywhere you go, the thing is following you. It's just, it's just, you can't get, you can't shake it off. And I say, Lord, when I sing, Lord, let, let them be singing in day one. Ah, that song. Day two. I can't stop singing that song. Day three. I cannot stop singing this song. So that, so that, that those are the kind of um, prayers that I pray. So if you have, you know, I always say, people, if you have no relationship with God, it's very difficult to do what we do without a relationship with God. It's easy to sing. It's easy to sing. I mean, and especially if you are skilled, wow, you can do a whole lot. You can do a whole lot with your voice. Because the, the voice is one of the, it's a, it's a phenomenal instrument. And you can do a whole lot with your voice, which is why we see how the world has been swayed by music and by singers just by one note. Just one note. Mm -hmm. Hey, somebody's... <laughs> somebody's... You know, all you need to do... Hum! You know, you're, you're humming something. 
So I'm singing amazing, but, but I mean, for me, it's more than a skill. Because I'm, as I'm, as I'm humming it right there, I'm seeing visions of heaven right there. I'm, I'm singing amazing grace. Wow. You know, in my head, I'm, but obviously, somebody can pick that up who is skillful, and they can mess you up. Because they know how to use their voice to manipulate your emotions. Yes. But, but you know, God gave us the skill so that we would use the skill... You know, I, was, I, I, always, I still stand by the fact that a skillful singer, a skillful minstrel does not distract with their skill. Rather, their skill enables them to do everything that God wants to do in a song. So if he wants you to hum, you can hum. If he wants you to sing soft, you can do it. If he wants you to whisper, you can whisper. Which is why we should be skillful. Because there are things that God wants to do with the different aspects of our voice. If he wants, if he says, well, okay, I want it meditative, whisper, whisper that whole bar, whisper it. Can you whisper it or you can only shout? So that's, so for me, that's, you see, that's, that's where I, I jump off when it comes to skill. I, I always say that skill is important. God wants the skill so that we can use it to interpret what he wants to say. But if I am unskillful, I'm going to be one way, I'm going to sing it one way every time. And if God is saying, Hum the whole song. Do you have the breath, the ability to hum a whole verse? Do you have the ability to whisper a whole song? So that because God is trying to get a particular message across to somebody and that is how they need to hear it. Or is it that I can only sing one way? I ask for media, this, I always sing like this. I can only shout one one vocal dynamic that volume dynamic shout that's the that's the volume shout and for some people they can only sing quietly and they, they, there's a day that God is saying shout for the Lord has given you the city shout and you have to be able to shout and declare the victory so you must be able to use your voice so for the when it comes to the skill you've got to match the skill I would say that the they say that they say the you know the the ministry and the artistry for us it goes hand in hand you have to balance both but i always say that you cannot sacrifice the spirit of god on the altar of skill you cannot sacrifice the spirit the voice of god on the altar of skill your skill can never override what god is doing what God is doing always comes first. Your skill is a vehicle to convey the message. That's what I learned. Your skill is a vehicle to convey the message. That is why the skill must be intact. So that whatever message God wants to deliver, I am ready. If God wants me to shout it, I can shout it. If God wants me to whisper it, I can whisper it. If God wants me to hum it, I can hum it. If God even wants a verse, some of us, if God wants me to whistle it, I can whistle it. You know, we can, we, we can use our voice. The instrument is versatile, agile, and ready to do the job. Eh? Not, that, oh, ask for me, I can sing, and then, it's all one way. Ah, no, 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 no. You have to, what is God saying? In which flavor does God want to get it across? I'm in the midst of young people. What song am I going to sing? You know, I listen to a lot of songs that my... And it's good to listen to those. I listen to a lot of songs that my, my daughters listen to. My daughters listen to a whole lot of stuff. And I, anyway, I, I'm, I've been a person, and I learned that a long while ago, that content overrides style. So I can listen to rock. I can listen to rap. Urban, I listen to everything. There's no music that I can't listen to. Because for me, I ask, what is it about? Is it about God? I can listen to it. I don't care. My culture does not determine the songs that I listen to. And your culture should not determine the songs that you listen to. I listen to everything. Which is why even though my, my tree is disastrous, <laughs> I can sing tree. I will learn it. It's talking about God, I'll learn it. I get my dictionary out, get my phonetics out, transcribe the song. 
What is this saying in tree? Where are the alphabets? Where are the phonetic alphabets that can break down the tree for me? Break it down. I get my phonics. I go back to kindergarten. Phonics. Learn the sounds. Sing the song. And in singing the song, before singing the song, I already found out what the song meant. So as I'm singing it, my, though I'm thinking in English, I'm singing the tree. So it's not my language. So I tell, I tell people, every singer should be able to sing any, they should place any language before you should be able to sing it. I remember having to go to, was it Cote d'Ivoire with Pastor Matthew and my husband, we had to go. And I was there, all the songs are in French. So I, go, I had to get the songs out, translate it, sing the song, not in English. We had to sing it in French. I remember we went to, where was it we went to? Was it Ahafo? We went for some crusades. I had to sing in Ere. I, sang, I, had to, I remember, I remember uh, one of the other minstrels, Celestine Duncan. I said, Celestine, I'm going to this place. Uh, what would be the best song? And she, and she got me a song and she taught me the song. And, I, and the song, uh, it, it, and it, was a song, it was a song that was relevant to a crusade. She said, this song, everybody knows it and it, they, will be, they will be able to relate to it. And I got the song. She gave the song to me. And, we, and that's what we use. I use it at a crusade. So, I mean, whenever we're going for any of those crusades, I will ask, what, what language do they speak there? Can somebody give me a song? Or let me translate one of mine. So, you, you, a singer, you must be versatile. You know, and that's what, that's what I've learned. That you can't be... There's so much to talk about. <laughs> you can't... Eh? You, can't you, you can't put yourself in a... Uh, uh, ask so for me. Uh, me, I'm from Ghana. <laughs> you understand? We understand local songs. Please give me a break. You understand? Yeah, we understand. Uh, yeah, in this voice, we understand uh, local songs. Why are they bring all those Nigerian songs? Uh, it's not good at all. They only play Nigerian songs on the radio. They don't play, uh, play people. If you don't get up and sing it, the Nigerian people they will sing your song. They will sing your language. The Amer the Americans are already singing your language, and they will sing it better than you. Why you are basically going to be, eh, we should only sing, look, get up, sing theirs, too. Oh, why are we sitting here waiting for them to, get up, sing it, take this, translate it to a tree, and sing it. In it. Take it, how great is all that. Somebody should get up, translate it, get the copyright, and do it. Why are we waiting for them, and then, and they will sing, because there's, there's a whole medley by Donnie McClurkin and uh, Chevelle Franklin. Jesus. I thought, hey, they're picking all the <laughs> taking the songs, huh? Who, who, is, who is it? Um, Don McLaughlin is singing tree, and uh, uh, Don Moen is singing Igbo. And we are sitting here, eh, one is singing. Sing it, sing their song. Stop complaining. Learn the skill. How do they sing it? Learn the skill. And we should, we should make sure that we only sing Ghanaians. You sing everything. I, I, I told God a long time ago that whenever, wherever I go, I want to be able to stand on any platform. Nothing. They shouldn't say. Well, she can only sing English. No. What is the name of the country? Germany. Oh, yeah, where's the song? How, how, how do they pronounce that word? I will sing it. For the glory of God, we will sing it. I'm not going to go and say, eh, um, she only sings English. She can't sing German. Oh, she cannot sing another language. She can only sing English. No, 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 no. That's not happening. What is the language? Japanese. Oh, yeah, bring it. I will stay up all night. We will, we will sing it. Yes, because it's for God. Because you have to be able to connect. I learned that from going to the Crusades. That also you can sing one or two in your English, but then in your maybe I, okay, I, I, my the language that I speak predominantly is English. Yeah, but you can. But then when you go to a place where the people are predominantly in a particular language, you've got to be able to try and relate. So I, I was for all the Crusades everywhere I went. I had to sing. I, I had to learn three. I had to learn. Ever, you know, I learned a difference for whatever place we were going to. I made sure at least there was one, one or two songs in the local dialect that I knew, that I knew that they knew, were familiar with. Or we translated a song into, <clears throat> into their dialect and sang it. I remember Reverend, I went to Reverend Steve Mans and he was, and then after I finished, he would say, no, this woman is from London. I said, Pastor Reverend Steve, she is singing, the, oh, oh, Pastor, oh, Pastor, and he would go on and on. <laughs> you know how Reverend Steve is, and you go. <laughs> but I knew that I had to do that because I had to be able to relate to the people that I was with. So singers must be versatile. You must be able to sing anything. Don't limit yourself to oh, ask for me. Eh, I only sing. Eh, oh, ask for those um, jumpy, jumpy things. Eh, me, I sing slow songs. Eh, what's that? I remember once my pastor saying to me. He said to me, he said, Helen, um, you have to change. When I started leading worship, he said to me, Helen, you have to change 
your repertoire, as in the songs that you use. Because so far, you've been singing one particular style. <laughs> and you know for singers, they tell you that one, that one goes, the, the, the word goes <laughs> into your something. <laughs> deep, deep down, like, hey! So, so I, so, and I, and it was from then on that I decided I would sing rock, heavy metal, urban, Rap, I have to learn that one too. Rap, I we will sing it. So I, I, I'm just saying, I, I, I began, I, there was a lot of things I listened to, it, I, I, and, I, and I realized that there was so much. I mean, just sitting down with my daughters, listening to some of urban, so like I listened to things like, I listened to people like um, Lecrae and Dominio, you listen to some of these guys, it's like, what? And the content of the, of their rap, Kai, you'll be worshipping right there. The content of the rap is like, wow, this needs to be a song. I wish I could sing it. When they tell you some of the stories, like mm, the stories are so deep, you can feel that now nah, this guy was with God. You know, they 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 were rapping, but the content is so rich. I could worship with that. I, I, I could leave some worship songs behind. I could worship with that. Sometimes you say, let's replay it. You know, when we're in the car, we put it loud. All of us, four of us, two girls, mother and dad. Hey, song is <laughs> as, my, as my daughters would say, is jamming. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so. I decided to listen to everything and anything. It doesn't have to be for my age group. I mean, I was listening to the song in the car with my daughter. It's by, it's by two, their twins, Zoe Grace. Um, running, I think it's called Running to You. Running, you know the song. <laughs> and, it's, and I said to her, oh, I've got to learn. I, I, like the way she, I like the way she sings. I like the way she expresses herself. I've got to use her, some of her songs. I've got to listen to her songs more. I want to listen to it. That's singers, you know, worshippers who are learning, we want to know God and we want to know how to use our skill to, the, to, to glorify him, that wherever we stand we stand out, wherever we are we stand out, not that they're giving excuses for us, ah, the Christian ones, they are coming okay, just be, be, be prepared for a disaster, you know no, 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 when they see us, you know, which is why you know, I give it up for someone like Kim Burrell, anybody know who Kim Burrell is? nobody, the unbelievers they know, the demons, they know all of them, they know you cannot sing like her. And when she opens her mouth to sing, when she opens her mouth and she's just singing a hymn, you're like, eh? Is it the same hymn? Is it the same hymn or is it another hymn? You know, because she's used to, she's, she's going to use her voice to glorify God and honor God and she's going to sing it. She's going to sing it with all that is in her. And that's how we should be. But if you are unskilled, technically, there's some things that you just cannot do. It, it, I mean, it doesn't come like, it doesn't, it, you know, you just, you don't just start up singing. I mean, I'm not even there yet. I'm learning, I, I mean, over the past one month, my God, my mind has been blown. I've been learning some things. Jesus. I'm learning. I'm thinking, Lord, I thought I knew something. I know nothing. Thinking, <laughs> I'm learning. So you have to, as a singer, you have to be a learner. You have to be a learner of scripture. You have to be a learner of your craft, of what you do. You must know God. You know, people ask me questions like, so how do you do ad-libs? And I think, hmm. I say, ad-libs really is a mixture of, you know, obviously under, understanding your song, the content, and knowing scripture. Because what, you know, ad-libs basically is that you are, you, are, you are composing. You are composing on the spot. That's what an ad-lib is. You are composing on the spot. You are, you are adding to what the songwriter already wrote. Because you are expressing it yourself. You are, you are expressing your interpretation of the song. That's what the ad-libs are. And if you do not know what the song stands for, if you do not know scriptures that relate to what the song is talking about, you cannot ad-lib. You will repeat the whole line. I mean, there are times about there are ad-libs about you, you, you call in. Obviously, you're calling in the sentence before. So, obviously, you're, you're, you repeat the way you, know, you call in the sentence. So, you're saying the same line. But still, there's an understanding that you have when you're singing and when you're ad -libbing. A lot of it comes from your understanding of the song. It comes from your understanding of the song. And you having the knowledge of what Scripture says about that subject. Because sometimes you can repeat a line, and he did it. Uh, most of the song. I like Shelley sees a song, like they repeat the line, uh, he'll do it again. And then the, the choir is singing, like, he'll do it again. And you're there saying he'll do it again. Yeah, we know it. What will he do? <laughs> Why, what did he say he would do? Say what he said he would do. And he, and he would do it. And we know he would do it. And he would, ah, please. Ah. Which time my, my legs are shaking, my eyes are rolling. 
I need to walk out of the building because I cannot take it anymore. So, um, so it's important. You know, you're at, you pick a song that's a simple song, and you do it. Don't you know good as I change the end? You may not know how. Then, then, they, then they, they repeat this line. You may not know how. You may, and the guy saying, You may not know how. You may not know how. No matter how. What are you saying? You may not know how. You may not know how. You may not know how. Still, you may not know how. Now, what? How? How? Tell us how. Tell us how. And stop wasting our time. So, that sort of thing. I mean, I said that. that I mean, those kind of songs are so open. And those songs actually expose it because if you do not know detail, the song is just one line and you, you, there's space, there's big gaps in between. So you, you find that you, if you do not know scripture, what does the scripture say about God? What, what does the scripture say about God helping? What does it say about him helping us? What will God do? What does God do? What, will God, what won't God do? You know, so you should know who God is. If you don't know who God is, then you can't sing the song. And it will mean it will make no sense, it will make no difference. And you will sing and they will clap. But you want whenever you stand to sing a song, you want to add. What am I adding to the song? What, what am I how am I going to interpret? What am I adding to the song? Am I going to add to the song in terms of the ad libs that I give? Am I going to add to the song in terms of how my voice is going to interpret the song and get the right mood across? That when people hear it, they're like, Yes, what she sang was what I was thinking. She said it the way I would have said it. I can't sing it, but that's, that's, kind of how, that's how I imagined it. You must leave an impression. And there's a God impression that you can leave that stays, it stays for ever. So people of God, I just thought, let me just bear out my heart. I think, but I want you to ask questions. I, don't want, to, I want to talk more, but I think I want to stop. Because I, I want some questions. Are there any questions? I want some questions. So I want to kind of stop there. There's, there's a whole lot more to say, but I want to stop because I, I need to hear. Yes. Yes. So let me, let me um, I want to take some questions. Um, so you take questions on anything to do with ministry. I might not, I might not have touched on it, but you want to ask, please ask. So I'm ready for any questions. So you can raise your hands if you want a question. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Uh, please, I want to know, Ma, how will I know as a singer if I'm skillful or not? If I'm not, how will I add skill to my singing? So how do you know that? Well, I think you know whether you're skillful or not by just in singing. I mean, if, if, if I mean, basic skill, am I, on, am I on pitch? Am I going flat? Um, basic skill, my timing, rhythm, am I, you know, there's, there are just some basic things that you should know. Um, and so, um, and then you, you're able to pick out things that you know, okay, I'm very bad with off timing. I need to learn that one. Um, my pitch is, I, I go flat a bit. Okay, I need to learn of that. Um, my diction is bad. I don't pronounce words properly. So there are all the, the different areas of skill, whether it's your diction, your pitching, your r rhythm, all those sort of things that you, uh, yeah, you need to learn. Maybe some basic music theory that helps me understand what is being played by the keyboardist, all those sort of things. So, you, so those are the areas, that obviously, a singer needs to be skilled. I mean, basic areas that a singer needs to be skilled in. I mean, breath management, your rhythm, pitch recognition. Those are some very basic areas. Diction, a singer needs to be skilled. Diction, man breath management, pitch recognition, rhythm. I mean, you need to be skilled those are some basic areas where you need to be skilled as a singer. So and then if you find that, okay, I'm, I'm falling back on this, then you need to then, you don't want to go for some training. Speak to somebody who can help you with those areas. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. All right. Any, any questions? Please, I want your questions. Your questions, I, I've been talking a lot, but your, I think your questions for me are more important <laughs> than, yes, okay. Um, my name is Hazrat. Um, Your name? Hazrat. Hazrat. Yeah. It's a big name. Anyway, um, I wanted to find out, um, in your talk, you, you, you made mention of learning and um, you, you said a lot. So I, I wanted to find out the relevance of reinventing yourself as a menstrual. Because I, I personally, like you said, you learn rap, metal, rock, I mean... So basically, I'm looking at reinventing yourself. I mean, because the world is changing. 
uh, change is a constant factor that we have to accept. And if you want to, Paul said, I became all things to all people, so to win them to Christ. So if you want to get out there, how, how relevant is reinventing yourself as a ministry? Well, I'm not, uh, when, you, when you say reinvent, I, I assume you mean learning new things. Yeah, uh, yes. And, and adapting to change. Adapting to change. Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, let, let me just I'll give myself as an example. Obviously. I mean, um, my, my voice is not, I mean, my voice is still the same voice. But obviously, I decide, I can decide that, okay, I'm going to put it over certain kind of styles. Maybe I grew up singing, when I became a Christian, the music that I was introduced to was a lot of black gospel. So we sing, oh, Shirley Caesar, oh my God. You know, be growling and so, but I found that, okay, I can sing that up to a point. But what I did is I, the skill that I used, that I found in there, I, I, there's a skill in there, okay. They're very expressive. I take that expressive bit. And I can apply, if I sing it on my rock, if I take my rock music and I sing that I'll be expressive in there, I'll put my growl in there, it fits perfectly. I don't have to sing it black gospel style, but I can sing it I, vocally, I can implant it into my rock. So it dep- your different musical influences should be able to, vocally, some of them can fit anywhere. But we are the ones that have to be open to the different styles of music that are out there. And we shouldn't say, I can't sing that, or I can't sing this. We should, you should try it out. And I say it also depends on what we are listening to. A lot of us are listening is very narrow. What we listen to is very, very narrow. And it informs even the things that you hear. I mean, the notes, the notes that I hear, I hear in my head, I hear those. Mm. Or when I hear in a song, I hear someone, I, let's rewind that. Remind that. So you, you have to be a, a continuous learner to even think of reinventing. I mean, you won't, I mean if you're not learning, don't, you know, the word reinvent will not even come back to your mind. But when you are learning, you find that, look, actually, I can sing that. So that's what I found. When, when, when my pastor made that comment about, the black, about me being very, I mean, what he was saying was that it was very black. I was doing, as in black American. And I wasn't, I wasn't listening to other things. And I, I, I went out of the box. I listened to people who were doing heavy metal. And I found, that, that guy has a message. That guy's that guy song, it's correct. <laughs> you know, even though the style was like it was foreign to me to listen to somebody doing heavy metal, I thought, no, what, what he's saying is right. He was banging his head and doing all that, but the song that he was singing was right. And I heard the rock artist, and I thought, no, that, that the message in there is correct. I can sing it, and I can sing it my way, my black voice over the rock, hey, to work. So, so I, so you can, you you have to take yourself, and you got you've got to be a learner. You have to be a continuous learner. Don't stick to what is the norm. Sometimes we are so stuck in what we know. Because I had to even go, I had to go and dig back. Because I, I remember when I was younger, I listened to my father had collections of songs, white people, all kinds of people. So, so I used to in the car, and he used to play them in the car going to school. So I used to be, I used to learn, oh, I'm just in the car, I'll learn them in my head. So when he puts them out, I'll sing along, I'll sing along, i sing all, indigenous, there were some indigenous songs in Nigeria that nobody's even heard. I sang it. I don't know what I was singing, what they were singing, but they were singing something. Yes, I just started singing it. And, that's, and, that, and that particular indigenous um, tribe, um, which is my father's tribe, they, they actually sing a lot of minor notes. And I, I'm just, I, so I was just singing, I learned from, so that's so some of those things, I started picking from them afterwards. Ah, that one, pick from there. So you, you have to listen wide. And gospel music has a wide variety, but you have to look for it. If you don't look for it, you're not going to find it. That's what I found. If you don't look, you don't find So um, singers, we have to be continuous learners. You have to, we have to learn, because this is, God gave us a gift. We're not to go and bury the gift. We're supposed to get out there and find out. So what, what are they singing today? What are young people listening to today? What do the old people want to hear? What, what, how, how can I, this is a hymn. How can I contemporize this hymn? And so the generation that is, my generation can listen to it. Or the younger generation can listen. What can I do? How can I rearrange this hymn? What can I do vocally? How can I rearrange my vocals to fit into this style? You know, you, you've, you've, you've got to be, we've got to be continuous learners. And, that's, and God expects us to be continuous learners. You know, when, when the Bible says that we should study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, it's not, that wasn't just a one-time process of that when I, I, do it, I, do it, I do the Bible study today, then I, I've learned everything. No, every day you are studying. You are studying because you want to know more about God. The same with the, the skill that God has given us. We must be learners. 
You know, I tell people that we have the best of times. You know, if you've got Google, I tell people, Google it. You don't even need to go and buy it nowhere. Get on there. Google music styles. Listen. Gospel, different gospel. Listen. Listen to the different styles. Put your voice on it. Sing along. Some of us, we don't do nothing till we get to choir rehearsal. Ha! Ah, please. You can't do that. You can't do that. Oh, I'm going, ah. Oh, the song they gave us last week. Did you listen to it? Oh, it was on the WhatsApp platform. Oh, I didn't get it. Come on! You're, you're a singer. You're an instrumentist. And you don't listen to nothing, then you need to be sacked. It's the truth. You should be sacked. Because if we were paying you, we would have sacked you a long time ago. Because you are not meeting the criteria of what is of your description. Singer, singer, sing, 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 sing. Let the neighbors know that you sing. Yes, you, you, you have to learn. And some of it, as I said, you don't need money. You don't, it's not a money issue. I tell you, don't even give me that. It's not a money issue. In my time, it, 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 there was a money issue because we could, I couldn't get it free. I couldn't go on the internet. I had, I had to go to shops and buy music books, get tapes, get CDs, and listen. But now, I don't even have to go and buy them. There's some that they're free. They're just sitting there, waiting for people to just... Even if you can't download, listen. Some can't, you just listen. They're there for you to listen. So use your phone, use your data wisely. Use it to go for the glory of God. Use it for Him. Yes? Did that make sense? Okay. <laughs> did, I, did I, I hope I answered your question. Cool. Thank you. Um, your name? I'm KK at KK. TMO. Uh, Pastor Helen and I have a thousand questions for you, but I won't hog you. <laughs> we can't exhaust that. <laughs> I, I, I have a ministry question okay. for the guy who is not necessarily the singer, but who manages the singers. Okay. And this not being a commercial band where I pay the guys and I can tell them what to do. Yes. And they are essentially people who say they want to minister unto God. Yes. And we came out here, and most of them should have been here if they were serious because they want to learn, and nobody shows up. Mm -hmm. But they all want to show up and sing tomorrow on stage. Where do I draw the line between the disciplinarian and the encourager, the builder, the minister? That's one. I have others, but I'll give okay, others let, a let me chance. answer. I, I think the important thing is that um, let's always remember that there's two aspects, obviously, when it comes to ministry. There's, there's obviously the aspect of the, we are, we're dealing with people, but then also the aspect of, that we need, aspect of putting um, certain um, things in place to, say, to, to help, because sometimes people will not move themselves along. We have to move them along. When it comes to the area of skill, that we have to we have to put things in place and say, okay, this year we are doing X Y Z training. We're going to do this. This is what we are expecting. Of we're expecting one, two, three. Um, okay, at this rehearsal, we're going to um, and the next five rehearsals, we're, each of you is going to come and sing a song. You're putting them on the spot because they will not do it at home themselves. So some of the things you, you have to implement it yourself to for them to get it done, um, and you and you teach them. Okay, this is what we want. We want a particular, we want you to sing a particular, we want, you have to keep time. You have to be punctual. You are teaching them certain things by the way, by what you are doing. People don't pick it, some people won't pick it immediately. But you have to keep on, you know, it's, it's a very tedious task, but you have to keep on repeating. For a leader, you have to keep on repeating. Sometimes you, re you repeat it in different ways. Or sometimes you bring somebody else, you bring Pastor Ellen to come and repeat the same thing. <laughs> it's true. Yes, you have to keep on repeating the standard. That's, I, I remember my husband telling me, said you have to keep on repeating what the standard is. Don't move from the standard. Repeat it. Whether you are going to creatively, re creatively repeat it in a different way, repeat it. Because you don't want them to deviate from what the standard is. So you have to keep finding ways of repeating. This is the standard. This is what we expect. This is what we want. And then you try and put in things in place that you can use, that you can little things that you can use to implement the standard. If you want them to, if you want to develop more lead singers, then it's okay, okay, um, next week Friday is lead singers, lead singers uh, day. 
all of you want to try something out all, um, obviously while you're doing that you are watching you are looking you're writing notes you're taking notes on what's happening and you've made some notes even though they might be having fun and thinking oh, it was just a great time but you are taking notes so you're learning different things and then you and sometimes one of the things that i also learned helps a lot nothing to do with singing but um the care that we leave the people that has nothing to do with the work I mean, I am a work person. I'm a task person. So I would just say task, task, task. Do, I mean, because that's how I am. I can, I, I can forgo food and record a whole day. I mean, nothing. And I'll be fine. I'll just drink water. But somebody, we're passing out on the floor. They didn't give us food. A wicked woman. Ah, she wants us to record. You know, but I can, I can record a whole day, drink water. And in the evening, I'll eat my food. But somebody else... They, they, they can't do that. So I have to, I, I have to learn that everybody doesn't work like I work. People work differently. So I had to, I had to find out what makes them tick. So I found things like okay, what makes them tick and also beyond the work, outside of the work, speaking to people, talking to them about what is happening in their lives. Because I found that beyond what was um, happening in the rehearsal, the people had a life outside of the rehearsal. And there were things going on in their lives that sometimes if you don't ask them, they won't tell you. And they will just take steps. They just will not show up for this. They just will not turn up for this. I mean, I found out things like, the guy doesn't even have any money. And he's so, embarrassed to tell you, he's so embarrassed to tell you that he doesn't have money. He just doesn't show up for the rehearsal. So, he's just embarrassed. He can't tell you that, Pastor, I don't have money. So, he doesn't show up. So, then, so, so I found in talking... I had to learn, I mean, that, that was something I had to learn in talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, you will learn what you will not learn in the group. I, le I learned calling people one-on-one. -on -one. How are you doing? What's happening with you? Then you find, oh, I'm actually out of job. And, you think, and, you, and in my head, I thought you had a job. Oh, I, I resigned six months ago. I'm thinking, oh, my God. Then I, 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 I replaced six months in my head. I think, oh, my God. I remember this. I remember that. I think, oh, my God. So all this why she didn't have a job. Uh, so... There's also that aspect whereby we need to communicate, talk with people. You learn a lot, and you begin to learn how the psyche of the person, just by them, finding out how they are, and not necessarily only calling them, why didn't you come for rehearsal? Why didn't you come for this meeting? It, sh it should not only be about work. People want you to care about them, about their personal lives as well. So, so, so that is one of the things I learned. Like. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Helen. This is John. Um, I would want you to, in, your, in one of your answers, you mentioned the influence you had on the music genres you, you were listening to. Perhaps your dad had those records and you were listening. Yes. Or, right. I would want to ask, how much of the songs you listen to outside should influence what you do as a minstrel in the house of God? Um, and, so, outside being where? I mean, songs you listen to perhaps on the radio, because I know... Um, a lot of young people listen to all kinds of music from R&B to whatever to genres that I may not even know. Yes. And those are the kind of RTs that appeal to them. And most of these people are in church. Mm -hmm. How much of that should influence what you do in building up, you know, your skill as a young person trying to lead worship? Okay. I th you see, okay, l let's make a difference. If I'm leading congregational worship... I cannot stick to my style. Congregational worship, you, the, 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 the demographics of the group of people in a congregation, you know, you, you are not going to meet every, you can't focus it on one style, unless it's like one of those typical services, a youth service. Now, I know a youth service, there's a particular slant, naturally. I'm not going to come and stand, stand there singing hymns, you know. So, you know, there's a slant. But when I'm doing a congregational, it's a, congreg a, a full my church congregation, I've got to pick a wide, I've got to, I've got to pick, I pick a wide variety, but I also limit. I'm not necessarily, I worship, I can't do an RME song. Also, I mean, why would I do an RME song? Because the people cannot sing along. Because I think that when I'm leading people in worship, I'm thinking of, okay, the singability of the song, the lyrics, can the people follow it, the less technical song because I, it's congregational worship so I want them to be able to sing along and not stare at me so there's that aspect if I was doing a concert and it's not maybe it's my concert then I will pick I'll pick the stars that I am that I'm that I that I that I feel 
um, ex- that I'm able to use to express what God has given me. So if, I'm, if my voice lends itself to R&B, I'm not really an R&B singer. I mean, I could sing it, but that's not really, it's not really my style. I mean, I'll listen to it, I'll take some things out of it and use it. But, um, so I think for, for a singer, you need, you need to know the styles that, there's some styles that naturally we lean, all of us have styles that we naturally lean towards. Even though we still learn from other styles, we learn that we can take and we can adapt to other styles. But we all lean towards certain styles. You know, there's some young people that they listen to a lot of rap, urban music, rap, and that is kind of the main. But I always tell them, still listen widely because the messages on the, you will learn some from all the different styles. And even, even, even musically, you will learn a lot from, um, from all the different styles. So I think... Um, when it comes, to it, you're, you're choosing the songs and the styles based on the platforms that you're on. I think that's important. Based on the pl- what platform am I on, who am I addressing? If I'm in a church that has a demographics of over 50, 50 years old, then that should inform me of the kind of songs I should choose. If I have a demographics of 25 to 35, then I know that, okay, well, these guys are not going to be listening to, mm, what they call those um, crying songs, more, more, more. Those lamenting songs. <laughs> you know, they're not going to listen to it. I don't need that. You know, so there's a certain age. And if I'm in a, if I'm in a congregation whereby the, the predominant language is not English, even then. So the, you have to be sensitive to where you are and the congregation that you're ministering to. Because I always tell people that the aim at the end of the day and the question I should ask myself is, did we worship? If we didn't worship because I wanted to impose my style on everybody and they were all staring at me, then I've lost the purpose for the day. If the the people couldn't speak English and I was busy speaking English and they didn't understand what I was talking about, then I've lost the purpose. I've not allowed the people to worship. So it's always important to um, look at the, the demographics of the congregation, the audience that you're addressing is always important. Did that make sense? Okay, yeah, okay, I'm just going to say something, <laughs> just a minute, um, sorry, just a minute, um, also, but um, in, in the, in, we were talking about listening, in the listening as well, I mean, people will say, okay, but um, maybe they listen to secular artists, but I was actually, oh, but I say, actually, when it comes to the secular artists, I mean, are there R&B gospel singers, I, I feel that we are not looking, that's what I found, I mean, when my daughter started listening to um, urban gospel music. I mean, I couldn't believe the variety of songs that were actually. I I thought, what? I didn't even know all these ex- actually ex- all these songs actually existed. So I feel that even when it comes to that, people say, hey, well, I like R and B, but there are R and B gospel singers. So it's for me. It's, it tells me what is it that you really want to hear? Because the R and B, the notes R and B, the notes are all the same. Whether it's a gospel singer or a secular singer, the R and B is R and B. Rock is rock. But it's the content that makes a difference. So I have to ask you whether is it what the guy is saying that you really want to hear or, you know, is it the style? So, so those things are important that when it comes to the style, because a lot of people say, oh, it's only, we only hear it on secular radio. I say, but that's because you haven't searched for the Christians who are actually sing in the same style. So that's important. My name is Nana. Okay, so you've talked a lot about um, singing and singers and singing. I also want to know about the instrumentation. Mm. Um, I mean, songs are also backed by instruments. Mm. So what would be your advice to, to instrumentalists? Because at the end of the day, they are supporting the singers. So what do you look out for? What is the singer's ideal instrumentalist? What, what do you look out for? <laughs> ideal. <laughs> you see, I think, let's just say musicians. Musicians covering everybody. Singers, instrumentalists. Musicians in the house of God must be people, first of all, you must have a relationship with God. It affects everything. It affects even, I mean, for, for those who are playing an instrument, it affects even how you play. It affects how your mind is tuned. You, there, there, there are some people that play their notes, notes that they hear. They think, mm, where did you get that from? You know, you're, leading, you're worshiping, you're playing, you're, you're in worship, and the, the, the keyboard is playing something, and immediately it plays that your, your spirit, that's the note, stay there, you know, you're like, but it wasn't like he rehearsed it. 
So I, I think it's important that mus musicians, instrumentalists, whether it's sing, our relationship with God is number one. And we must love God. We must seek God. It is not that, oh, I'm doing this thing in church. I'm doing it. We only come for this bit. I'm playing keyboards. So here I am. No, you are a Christian. You are a child of God before the instrument. You are a child of God. You must know God. That's why you're on that instrument. We put you there because you're a child of God. Otherwise, we'll go and hire somebody who does not know God to play it for us. But we want the spirit that is on you. And that's the spirit of God. You have a different spirit. It's the spirit of God. And you must engage that spirit. You must engage the Holy Spirit. You must know God. You must do Bible study. You must fast. You must pray. It's not for some people. Anybody who, 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 who serves in music in church, you must be fasting. You know, sometimes I get, um, you must fast. You must be, you act like you're the pastor. Yes. The musicians, and when I say musicians, I mean everybody who is in music. We must be like theologians who search the scripture. We know what the word says. And we apply it to, our, to, what we're, to the craft, that God, the skill that God has given us. So the, the, the commitment to the work, the commitment to your skill is the same. We cannot have um, instrumentalists in the house who think, well, let me, I'm, ask for me, I'm just here to play the keyboards. When they finish playing, they go and stand in the and stand under the tree and have a discussion about the last football match. You are there, you are there to serve and you are there to receive. You are part of the service. You have to learn something. You came to church, you came for the service, you have to learn something. And all those, what you are learning in church, what you are learning in the house of God is informing the input that you are bringing. It affects even the way that you talk, the way that you relate to your pastor, the way that you relate to each other, all these things. But if you're not growing, and I'm an instrumentalist, you've got your drumsticks attached, carrying your guitar, you know, let everybody see that. That's for me, there, yeah, I did some, you know. No, 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 you have, you're, you're a Christian, you must know God. The same way that we are expecting, we are expecting the pastor to see God. We expect you. You are the most visible in the church. Your deacons don't get to stand on stage. You are on stage. Your deacons, your ministers do not get... How many of your deacons in your church stand on, on, on the platform every Sunday and say something? We are the ones saying something every Sunday. Us. And then you want to, you want to just stand there, play keyboard. And, no, you must know God. Let the Holy Spirit be speaking to you while you're sitting there. Receive instruction from the word. Practice the word. Live it out. You'll find that our music will be different. The level of our music will... will will go higher because the, the things that the Holy Spirit downloads into your mind, you're standing there sometimes, as a vocalist, I'm, you know, it's like I'm seeing colors. And then if, if I then have a man who is on the keyboard, a man or woman on the keyboard, who is not in tune with God and who is unskillful, spiritually and technically, then they cannot interpret, even if I sing it, they, they, they will interpret nothing. They'll be looking at me like, ah, what, next song, this is not what, this is not what we rehearsed. But somehow the Holy Spirit doesn't kind of cancel that rehearsal out. So I think the, so there's the, for the, what, what I'm saying applies to both. What I've said so far, I mean, obviously I'm a singer, so obviously I talk a lot to singers. But what, I, what I've said so far applies to both people who sing and play instruments. The commitment that we are seeking is the same. Our relationship with God must be intact, must be strong. We must pursue God. And we must put God first. And it shouldn't be an issue whereby... With the instrumentalists, whereby it's become a fight. Eh, the pastor is getting paid. How come we are not getting paid? Okay, but, but, but there are some I should give us that if you, in Jesus' name, prepare as hard as the pastor. Maybe you'll get paid. Do everything, do everything. All the preparation the pastor does, he paid for. He fasted and prayed the whole week. He stayed up all night before, before, before Sunday. He prayed. Ah. If you go and try some of it. And God will pay you. We can, okay, let me, I don't want to go there. Let me not go there. Okay. <laughs> let me not go there. But I'll keep on talking. <laughs> Pastor Ellen, there's a last question. It was online. Okay. But uh, to save time, uh, for those of us who came, there are some forms we left on your seats. Two things. If this is your first time, being a part of this meeting, please fill out both the registration and the, what's the other thing? And the feedback form. But if you've been here before, you can forget about the registration, but please fill out the feedback form for us. 
John, what's the question again, the online question? God and ministering to man. The difference between ministering to God and ministering to man. Okay, I, I don't think that... Um, I, we're not necessarily um, called... I won't say we're called to minister to man. We are called to worship God. I mean, Scripture always says, Sing unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Bless the Lord. So everything that we are doing is unto God. God is the one that ministers to the man. And I must prepare myself as a vessel that God will use to minister to the man. But I must minister to God. God is the audience that I must aim to please. Not that I'm aiming to please the people. Oh, he, they like this. When I come, these people on this side, they like that fast song. Let me sing it. No. It's the, 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 whenever you're preparing a list, you're preparing songs, worship, the aim is God. God is the one we are aiming to please. We always say there's one audience. Audience one, God. If God is not pleased, the people will not be blessed. God must be pleased with the offering that we are, we are, we are presenting. Amen? Okay. Let's put our hands together for Pastor Helen. Thank you so, so much. Um, we are going to take a short break because um, we are already behind time. She's going to lead us in, in worship. But we need to take a short break. She needs to take a breather. She's been speaking for almost two hours. And in the meantime, please fill out those forms for us and pass them to the end. There will be some light refreshment for your patients. But please don't go. Wait behind and be a part. We'll be back by 5.30. We'll also take the opportunity to get our instruments um, set up. So thank you very much for being a part of this period. Please fill out the forms and then you'll be sorted out with the refreshment and we'll be back at 5.30. Thank you very much.